Okay, so we're ready to start talking about the small signal analysis of our differential uh, amplifier. And so there's a couple um, assumptions here we're going to make first here is first off we're going to um, assume we are biased in the linear region. And remember, um, I'm going to scroll back here a little bit, see where I can find the graph here. So this is when we talked about the linear region here um, of it, and I zoomed in on this particular graph. So remember, these are the currents for the differential amplifier, the two currents, IC1 and IC2. Um, and we're assuming that we're in this linear region here, um, where they're um, as far as our um, we're also going to assume transistors Q1 and Q2 are biased at the same Q point. In other words, uh, we're assuming that the differential, the DC differential voltage for them is zero. Um, and then what we're going to look here is we're going to look at the small signal. So we're going to first off draw, it's going to be a pretty big circuit here. So let me make sure I get enough room here. So we have VB1 and then We have RB, our pi one, GM, V pi one, RC. VC1, and then essentially we're going to mirror this GM VPi2 VC2 RC VB2, RB, and then we're also going to have here we're going to assume the current source that we have, that current mirror is not ideal, and so we're going to have some output resistance from that current mirror, and we know that that output resistance is due to the early voltage. And this should be ground here as well. And plus minus V pi 2 plus minus V pi 1. And then RB here, I'm just going to put it off to the side. RB is resistance from voltage source. So maybe that's small, maybe that's um, not. So first thing here, um, yeah, I should technically be a little bit more careful. GM1, oh, I'm sorry, that would be 2, 1, or pi 1. Now, we're also going to make, because they're biased at the same point here, um, we are just going to say that, well, we know here that r pi 1 is r pi 2, which is just going to be some r pi, because they're biased at the same Q point. GM1 then would equal GM2 which would just be GM, 
again because they're biased at the same Q point. And then we're going to write a KCL equation here. So we're going to do KCL at node VE. So in other words, we're going to do a KCL right there. And so we have to think about this. We have a lot of things going on here. So we can draw currents leaving, entering, and things like that. So I've got a current leaving down there, but I have a current that's entering to this node because remember this whole, I'm going to highlight it in blue, this is the entire node here. Okay, I know that's pretty ugly what I just did there, but that's the entire node, so I'm going to erase it now. Um, and then we have this current coming down there as well. And we have another current coming down. And we have another current coming down into that node. So remember, current entering a node is equal to the current leaving the node. So right here, um, from this one right here, we're going to start right there. We would get V pi. And I'm not going to do V pi 1 because, um, all right. No, I should do V pi 1. V pi 1s are not necessarily the same because VB1 is not necessarily equal to VB2. But VP, V pi 1, what I can do is say divided by R pi. So V pi 1 divided by R pi, because that's going to get me the current through that resistor, which is the current then entering that node, plus GM V pi 1 plus GM V pi 2 plus V pi 2 over R pi is equal. So that's the current entering the node, and that's going to be equal to VE over RO, because that's the current leaving the node. So that's my KCO equation. Now we're going to just clean this up a tiny bit. Um, and how we're going to clean this up here? Well, um, we're going to remember that beta is equal to gm r pi. So what does that mean? I could write gm as beta over r pi. So I'm going to do and write this here as then v pi 1 over r pi plus beta v pi 1 over r pi plus beta v pi 2 over r pi plus v pi 2 over r pi is equal to ve over ro. Now, cleaning it up, factoring some things out, we should be able to clearly see we get beta plus 1 over r pi times v pi 1 plus beta plus 1 over r pi times v pi 2 is equal to VE over RO. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do here, let me just say what our initial goal here is. Our initial goal is to write what this VE is in terms of these input voltages B1 and B2. Um, because if we can figure out that voltage, we'll be able to help figure out what these VC1s are. Um, because I need to know the voltage here, um, because then I can figure out what the voltage is um, across the RC, and well, you know, we can just easily figure out those output voltages. So that's kind of our goal here. So we need to figure out VPi1 and VPi2 here. But if I think about this for a second here, VPi1 is just going to be a simple voltage division. So that's going to be RPi over r pi plus r b times 
VB1. Now I'm going to rewrite this as V pi over R pi is equal to VB1 over R, R pi plus RB. And then we also get, um, I'm sorry, V pi 1. We'd also get V pi 2 over R pi is equal to VB2 over R pi plus RB. Now, you might say, well, why are we doing that here? Well, let's look back at the previous equation. I have a V pi 1 over R pi, and I have a V pi 2 over R pi. So if we substitute that in now, what do we get here? Well, we would get beta plus 1 times VB1 over R pi plus RB plus beta plus 1 VB2 over R pi plus RB is equal to VE over RO. Now let's see if we can simplify this a little bit here. I just realized I made a mistake here um, in a previous line here. So because it's like something's not working out correct here. Um, so let me fix that. I'm going to just erase this whole line here and we'll rewrite it. It's almost correct. But these lines here this line here is incorrect, um, as well as this line here. Because the voltage division would work, but except we need to minus um, VE. Why do we need to minus VE? Well, because we're talking about this V pi 1 here. So, you know, if we're wanting to do a voltage division, there's, there's a voltage here, VE. So, you know, we'd have V pi 1 minus VE that gets us all the way to ground and then you'd you know have the voltage division going there so that's the reason we have to do that um, and so we need to fix this and basically this just becomes minus VE and this one just becomes minus VE now let's go ahead we're still doing the same kind of substitution um, but now what we'll have is we'll have beta plus 1 times VB1 minus VE over r pi plus r b plus beta plus 1 times v b 2 minus v e over r pi plus r b is equal to v e over r o. Now, simplifying this out a tiny bit here, you could rewrite this as VB2 or VB1 maybe, doesn't matter the order technically, plus VB2 minus 2VE times beta plus 1 over R pi plus RB is equal to VE over RO. Now remember, my whole goal here was to find VE in terms of VB1 and VB2. So that's my whole goal here. So the remaining thing to do, and I'm not going to show you all the steps, is to solve for VE. Because clearly what would we do? Well, we'd have to move this term to the other side, factor out the VE, and then divide both sides by it, um, and simplify as much as we can. When we do all of that, the end result here is that you get VE is equal to VB1 plus VB2 divided by 
2 plus r pi plus r b over beta plus 1 times r o. Okay, so this is where we're going to stop for now on this video, because this is kind of the first step for determining what the output is. This is the first step for finding V out. And in the next lesson, we will continue on um, to get more steps on figuring out what um, V out is.